Today we're going to shine a light upon chlorine gas and in the process alkanes will be transformed into alkyl chlorides along with hydrochloric acid. <laughs> okay, 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 no more preacher voice, sorry about that. Okay, normal voice. Alkanes, treat them with chlorine gas and light will go to alkyl chlorides along with one equivalent of HCl gas. What's the most important question to ask yourself anytime you see a new reaction? I think the most important question to ask yourself is what are the key bonds formed and the bonds broken during the course of this reaction? And if you look closely, you can see the bond formed here is carbon chlorine, key bond broken here is carbon hydrogen. What do we call a reaction when we're forming and breaking a bond on the same carbon? We call that a substitution reaction. And specifically, this is actually a free radical substitution reaction on an alkane. How do we know it's a free radical substitution reaction compared to other types of substitution reactions? Well, look for the presence of light. Light is really important for the mechanism of free radical substitution reactions. We'll see in the mechanism, we talk about that later. Some of the other bonds formed and broken in the course of this reaction. We're forming HCl. We're also breaking the chlorine-chlorine bond, okay? So this is the sum total of all the bonds that are formed and broken in a free radical chlorination reaction of alkanes. Let's look at some specific examples. Now, I could have picked something really simple to use like CH4 and probably I should have, but I didn't. I picked cyclohexane, although it ends up being the same as methane. Why is that? Well, methane, you've got four identical hydrogens, so it doesn't really matter which one you take off. Same thing for cyclohexane. We have 12 identical hydrogens on cyclohexane. If we take one equivalent of chlorine gas and light, we're going to replace one hydrogen on cyclohexane with chlorine. Now, it doesn't matter which hydrogen we've removed because those 12 hydrogens on cyclohexane are exactly or chemically identical through symmetry. So we do this reaction, we end up with chlorocyclohexane. We also end up with one equivalent of HCl gas, which I didn't show, I probably should have. But that is a very simple reaction of chlorine with light. Now, one of the raps about the reaction of chlorine with, and, uh, with free radical reaction of chlorine with alkanes is not a very selective reaction. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that if you have other pro products possible, the chlorine radical is not very discriminating in which hydrogen it will remove from your alkane. So methyl groups, CH2, CH, doesn't matter. It's roughly all the same to a chlorine radical, which means that you end up going to end up with a huge mixture of products, um, roughly a statistical mixture of products, uh, given the opportunity. Let's look at propane here. Propane's got eight hydrogens. It's got two methyl groups, so that's a total of six. And we've got the CH2 on the end. Now, these methyl groups are identical through symmetry. So we have a total of six methyl hydrogens. We have a total of two methylene or CH2 hydrogens. So statistically, that's a ratio of three to one, which means that if chlorine was completely indiscriminate in, in the hydrogens that are removed from propane, we should end up with a three to one mixture of products. And in fact, that's very close to what is observed when we do this reaction. We end up with about a three to one mixture of one chloropropane and two chloropropane. That's if we add one equivalent of chlorine. Now, let's say we add a large excess of chlorine. When you add a large excess of chlorine, you're not only going to replace one hydrogen of propane, you're actually going to keep going and replace even more hydrogens until you replace them all. If we added more than eight equivalents of chlorine gas, we'd actually form the octachloropropane here, along with eight equivalents of hydrochloric acid. Things get even more complicated when we're dealing with a molecule like this one, 2-methylbutane. Here, how many different types of hydrogens do we have? We actually have four different types of hydrogens. We have these two methyl groups, which are identical for a total of six hydrogens here. We have a CH, a terminal hydrogen here uh, for one. We have a methylene, so two hydrogens here. And we have a terminal methyl group uh, here with three hydrogens. So we have four different sites where the, the chlorine could replace one of the hydrogen atoms. So we end up with four different products. The ratio of these products is going to be uh, statistical, meaning that the number of, hy of hydrogens of each type uh, is going to determine the ratio of each type of product. So 6 to 1 to 2 to 3, roughly, for these four products. One little extra complication. Sometimes this comes up. If you've covered stereochemistry in your course, you'll know that this carbon here is actually a stereocenter. When you're forming a new bond at a stereocenter, and you're forming a new stereocenter, in free radical substitution reactions, you're always going to get a mixture of enantiomers, a mixture of two stereocenters, just in case you want to point that out. Let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction. How does, it, how does the reaction actually work, and why do we actually need to shine the light upon chlorine gas to make this reaction work? Well, chlorine-chlorine bond is fairly weak, so when you treat 
chlorine with light, the light, the photon that hits the chlorine is of enough energy to promote an electron into the uh, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of chlorine chlorine, break the chlorine chlorine bond homolytically to give two chlorine radicals. Now, here I've shown this as a double headed arrow, but not going all the way. Just a little bit of chlorine radical can be formed at any given time. We have a lot of excess leftover chlorine gas. This is going to be important for the third propagation step, but just keep this in mind. We're going to need this later on. This is called an initiation reaction. Why? Because we're starting with zero free radicals and we're ending up with two free radicals. So, so there's a net gain in the number of free radicals uh, formed during this process. That's our definition of an initiation reaction. Once we form these chlorine radicals, the chlorine radical can then react with our alkane. In this case, I've chosen one, I've chosen propane to use as our alkane. It's going to take a hydrogen, in this example, from C1 of propane. And you can see we're going to form a hydrogen chlorine bond. We're going to break the carbon hydrogen bond. We're going to end up with a free radical on carbon one. And uh, as well, one equivalent of HCl. Now, most students get this part. It's the second propagation step that students have a hard time with. We'll, we'll call this propagation because we've got one free radical on the left-hand side, we've got one free radical on the right-hand side, so the number of free radicals is not changing, it's constant. The second propagation step is where students have a tough time. What a lot of people are tempted to do is to show this free radical on carbon-1 reacting with a second equivalent of chlorine radical we form in the initiation step, and we form one chloropropane in the process. Although it's very tempting to do that, that's not technically a propagation step. Why not? Well, we're starting with two free radicals on the left-hand side of the equation. We'd end up with zero on the end. That's not a propagation. That's actually a termination reaction. Watch out for that. Don't make this mistake. Everyone makes this mistake. You can be the person who doesn't make this mistake. Anyway, what actually does happen? Carbon-1 has a free radical. It's going to react with some of our unreacted chlorine gas. We're going to form a carbon-chlorine bond. We're going to break the chlorine-chlorine bond homolytically to regenerate chlorine radical. We're all in the process going to form one chloropropane. And this chlorine radical that we form can then come back and re-enter the reaction with another equivalent of propane. So in a sense, it's a catalyst. The chlorine radical is a catalyst in this reaction, and it, we are regenerating it as we proceed through the addition of stoichiometric amount of chlorine gas. As soon as our chlorine gas is consumed, uh, we can no longer per, you know, do a free radical chlorination of the alkane. That's all I really wanted to say about free radical chlorination. But there's stuff I've missed. Is this, is this video suck? Should I do the whole video in preacher voice? How can I make this video better? I can eat, I really appreciate any of feedback or or suggestions or comments you guys might have about how to make these videos better. This is my first video. Uh, so if you have anything, suggestions at all, I'd really appreciate it if you just make your voice known in the comments or if you want to email me, that's fine. Or if you have anonymous feedback, hate mail, what have you, there's a feedback, uh, feedback button at the top of my site. Just let it rip. Thanks for your time.